Hi, it's Derek from Tomcat Gas Training and welcome to another video on ACS revision in less than 10 minutes. Well, today's video is on CO and CO alarms, these things. So we've only got 10 minutes, so let's get on with it. Now, the first thing we're going to be looking at is CO poisoning or carbon monoxide poisoning. So let's have a closer look at the board then. So the first thing, CO when inhaled will combine with haemoglobin in our bloodstream and will reduce our oxygen levels. So CO's kind of a strange thing because our bodies like to absorb it faster than we would absorb oxygen. So this is why we quickly get carbon monoxide poisoning. Now, if we've got 13% CO in our bloodstream or 0.01% or 100 ppm, you're gonna get slight headaches. If we've got 85 to 90% CO in our bloodstream or 1.28% or 12,800 ppm, we've got death within one to three minutes. So, whew, pretty scary, eh? Symptoms. If you've got severe headaches, nausea, dizziness, tiredness, general body weakness, or you could be really cherry coloured in the face, then you've either been playing five-a-side football with me on a Monday night, or you've got carbon monoxide poisoning. Now one of the major things to think about with carbon monoxide poisoning is it has the same symptoms as the flu and this amazing pandemic we've been having for the last two years. So bear that in mind. Okay, so if you do suffer from any of these and you think it's carbon monoxide poisoning, you must immediately get fresh air. So get outside and then you need to seek medical help as soon as possible because you may need oxygen. So how does this CO get around the house and do you in then? So CO can be in rooms not containing appliances. And we mean appliances that burn fossil fuels. So gas, LPG, coal, any appliance that burns fossil fuels can give off carbon monoxide. Now, if we don't burn fossil fuels correctly, we don't give it the right amount of oxygen, it turns the carbon dioxide into carbon monoxide. And it's known then as the silent killer, because you can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it. So it's not very good, is it? So CO can enter the room from adjacent properties. So you could have a CO alarm, which we're gonna look at in a minute, but these CO alarms could be activated from next door either side. So that bear in mind as well. And then CO is lighter than air and can migrate to other rooms. Well, it's only lighter than the air once it's been burned. <laughs> So that's when it becomes lighter. It's actual density for CO at the same temperature as the room is the same. It will just hover around, but obviously it's coming from an appliance which is burnt, so it's gonna be a higher temperature and it can migrate through little cracks in the doors or even floorboards. So you could be burning a fossil fuel appliance downstairs, you could be in bed and you can get carbon monoxide from it that way. The staircase is also a good way of CO migrating around the room. So, that's the CO poisoning. Let's see how we're gonna protect ourselves. So we have a look at the British and European standards for the actual detectors themselves. So, there's two parts to the British standards for these detectors. We have BS EN 50291 part one, 2019 which is your test methods and your performance in domestic premises. We've got BSEN 50291 part two, 2010, which is if these things get moved around. And you can put any of these in a domestic property, either a part one or a part two. The one we've got here is a part one. Now, on the side of this, detector there is a sticker and it says the production date of the 6th of the 11th 2015 and then it says date of replacement November 2020 so this one lasts five years or lasted five years and it needs replacing 
whether it's been activated or it hasn't been activated. Now you must read the manufacturer's instructions for the alarms because they will tell you when their expiry date is and you must make a note of when they were installed. But on this one it's production and it gives you five years from production. That way along is it? Also, if gas engineers do get called out to see all alarms being activated by, they think, gas appliances and the engineer finds nothing wrong with the appliances whatsoever, then he must advise the customer that these appliances will need to have long-term monitoring on them. Now, the regulation says long-term monitoring. It doesn't actually say how long they need to be monitored. They just need to be monitored long term. So I'm guessing, do we change the alarm and then see if it goes off again? But that's what they say. That's what the regulations say. So are there any things that can accidentally set off these CO alarms? Well, yeah. If uh, you get car fumes coming into the house, so whether you're running your car in a garage or whether you're close to car parks and stuff like that, you could get the um, carbon monoxide coming in from the car. Smoking, so if the customers are heavy smokers, they can set their own alarms off. We could also have spillage of domestic cleaning products. They can also make carbon monoxide alarms activating. And if you've got one of these, these rubbish little spot detectors, which are absolutely useless, and you shouldn't be relying on them, but they can actually be activated by hairspray. Not that I need any hairspray, but if you've got one of these, get shut of it and get one of these. Let's quickly finish off now, because we're running out of time, with the sighting requirements for these alarms. Now remember, it's so important that you read the manufacturer's instructions before you install these things, because they're not all the same. But to BSEM 50292, they say they will prefer them on the ceiling, uh, more than 300 mil away from a corner, but not directly above a door, or a window, or an appliance, okay? Now if we do do them on the wall, it says they have to be a minimum of 1.5 meters off the floor if there's no door in that wall but if there's a door in the wall it needs to be higher than the door but it doesn't say <laughs> but it does say it needs to be a minimum of 150 below the ceiling and i have seen some of these measurements 300 but if they can go on the ceiling anyway and then they need to have at least 1.8 meters a minimum of 1.8 meters from the appliance up to three meters, depending on the manufacturer. Mains powered CO alarms should be cited to manufacturer's instructions. That's incredibly important. And do not install them next to windows, in the room with a cooker, or in a bath or shower room. Now, our regulations are changing in uh, England for alarms in rented accommodation. They are trying to bring in to make it mandatory that whether it's a private or a council run property, then they will need to install CO alarms and the CO alarms will be the property of the landlord and they must maintain them. That's already in in Scotland and has been in for a very long time. So hopefully by the end of this year, they're going to be bringing that in and I'll keep you up to date with that. So that's my quick look. Hopefully I've made it within 10 minutes of CO and CO alarms. So as usual, if you've liked this video, why don't you give me that thumbs up or leave a constructive comment down below. If you've not subscribed to my channel, then please subscribe because it helps. And again, don't forget to hit that notification bell because you want YouTube to tell you when we're uploading videos. All I've got left to say is thanks for listening. Thanks for watching and I'll definitely catch you on the next one, guys. Cheers.